Hello, for one special episode, we thought we'd bring back the Morgan Brandon video blog. Recently, we have been doing podcasts, so if you've not listened to any of our podcasts, please feel free to go and find them, check them out on wherever you listen to your podcasts. So they're on Spotify, Apple Music, and all the various different places that you can find podcasts these days. So please feel free to go and listen there. But for this episode, we thought we'd talk about... uh, Previously, we've talked about how Morgan Brandon was created, where um, we got to kind of creation and, and where we've been. Uh, but uh, somebody's asked me to do some speaking and go a bit further back. So kind of my life up to um, today, basically. So not just maybe in the last four or five years in, in Warrington, but even further be- before that and, and kind of how I got to this point. So I thought, why not, uh, as a bit of practice, do this in a video blog and we can understand how we're going to, um, or what I'm going to talk about in that um meeting and that uh, networking meeting that they've asked me to speak at um and then we can put together you know our actual presentation on the back of this video and where where we've gone through this so a bit of a trial run a bit of an experiment but I thought I'd share that story with you guys so it's not just to the people that are going to be in the room on that day so uh for those who don't know me my name is Callum Morgan and I own uh, Morgan Brandon we're a marketing agency that have now been going for 18 months, April 2017 we started, so we're now in uh, October, nearly in November 2018, so we're a pretty good start, we've uh, grown to eight, seven, seven or eight of us, I can never work this out, but seven or eight of us, and um, grown quickly in that time, and consistently trying to add to that team, adding different services, uh, we've kind of moved and adapted, we don't really have our own uh, niche yet, we are still kind of... Um, feeling our way around and seeing where the work comes from uh, we certainly have some areas that we're stronger in so i'd say property being one of them we do a lot of the work in uh, whether it be residential agency commercial agency holiday let work b&b's hotels there's lots of different areas that we work in so uh, new house builds that's what we're doing at the minute so there are a variety of things we're doing however we do cover all sectors at the minute um but say today we wanted to talk about kind of how did I get to this point so I thought I'd start from from day one really so uh, I was born in uh, Manchester Royal Infirmary I think March 14 1991 Uh, I was actually a really really ill baby so um, a lot of you that know me know that I've got allergies food allergies now that's about the only thing that still affects me from from when I was a kid I have asthma eczema uh, and these all came under atopic symptoms so I always laugh now and say I had allergies before they were cool because I was diagnosed with my allergies from kind of six or nine months old um the the doctor once um the story goes back to I'd gone for to have my test so um they do I think they do a patch test on your arm where they put a bit of each allergen on your arm and then that kind of reacts to how bad you're allergic to them and actually funnily enough 27 years ago I didn't get tested for nuts um which obviously a really common allergy now I am allergic to nuts but I wasn't actually tested for that then uh, but the thing that came up majorly was uh, was eggs um and to go back to to them days is um my mum always laughs that we were on a holiday in, in Spain and uh, my auntie had given me a little bit of Spanish omelette which I projectile vomited all over the Spanish restaurant and um, when they came back from holiday, left on the voicemail on the, the house phone, aunt's phone was a message to say under no circumstances ever give Callum eggs. Obviously nowadays that wouldn't happen, it would have been mobile phones, emails, there would have been a million ways uh, to communicate that message that I was alert to eggs um, but back in the day that message was left on our home phone and we didn't get that back till we get back from holiday which I always think is a is quite a funny thing when you think back to that and it's only 27 years ago uh, how far we've come in that time that message certainly would have got to me and if, if that would have been worse you know if that had been more egg and it could have you know been been more catastrophic at that time so it is um funny to see that just wouldn't have happened now because I would have been told instantly the doctors would have emailed or rang us on a mobile and, and we would have got that message so um, it's funny to see how the technology in the world we, we live in changed so on to to primary school obviously I was a very I say very ill baby kind of clearing up by primary school I was still riddled with eczema I had really bad eczema as a kid um, didn't sleep you know was in and out of hospital asthma was really bad asthma attacks um and, and all that so um battled battle through primary school i was always really good at maths um and mum always tells a story about how in my key stage one so what's that year two in primary school would have been about seven or eight um how when i did my maths exam i got four marks but when i did my english key stage one um i didn't get any or got very little uh, right and they actually established at that point that that was the first time that i'd ever, I'd ever read 
without pictures. So historically, I just guessed the words off the pictures and kind of got away with it and blagged it. But I actually couldn't read, and they didn't work that out until I was um, kind of key stage one, a year two in school, and they put me through, and they established I was dyslexic, and they uh, started to help. And I went to Twist Green Primary School in Culture, and to be honest, they were absolutely fantastic. I did a, a scheme called Tic Tac Toe, um, which learned me to spell. I still spell beautiful using birds eat crumbs as uncle sits eating. That's not beautiful. That's because I get the right word. Because birds eat crumbs as uncle sits eating. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, and I always remember these things that picked up. And I still struggle with spelling, but you learn to, to cope. It's not, you know, being dyslexic isn't something that should ever hold you back. It's just you have to, I think, by learning what it means to be dyslexic or how it affects you, could, you can learn how to, to cope with it and adapt and, and, and where to get help and where not to get help. Um, and, and and kind of Twist Green and the primary school uh, that I went to helped me through that process. They found it early. And by um, the end of primary school, I was I got a level five in, in key stage two. So I'd gone from not being able to read to getting a you know a very good score. And that was all down to, to primary school. I didn't have to do anything for my maths. Um but kind of the English had to work really hard on, which actually meant that I was, was put higher when I went through to high school. So that was kind of me me through primary school, good at maths, good at sport, enjoy my sport, uh, love my sport through primary school. Uh, really happy times, you know, early, early days, uh, but did really struggle with my English that, that primary school pulled me through. So on to high school. High school, uh, went to Culture High School in, uh, in Culture, Warrington. And uh, again, kind of was lucky because I'd done so well in primary school. I got a level six in my maths, which was like a special paper to do. They always pushed me hard in my maths with, with keeping working hard in my English. But because of my grades, I got setted really highly, e- even English, which I think was a really good thing for me because probably ability wise, I shouldn't have been in top set. Um, but they kept me there because it was my peers. I was in these sets with with the rest of you know in, in my maths and my science. Um, and it really made me strive to be better at English than I probably ever should have been, um, which I thought was a really good um, lesson. Through high school, sport really took a hold. A lot of rugby union um, wasn't in, in school, but playing for limb. Um, and sport teaches, or I feel, taught me a lot of lessons. Teamwork uh, always was, was team sports. I do play golf and tennis and stuff now, but um, love my team sport. Love my golf when it's team, not you know just on your own. And I think that teaches you a lot of lessons. I would recommend you know getting into any sport to, to any people or having a, a big hobby at, at school, which gives you friendships you know outside of your uh, your classes. Uh, GCSE is pushed on with with maths or maths. Um, and PE probably with my my two strong points. I got A stars in maths and PE at GCSE, um, and then on to college. I kind of made the decision at college that that maths was going to be my my way forward. So I went to Culture of College and stuck with maths and dropped the PE. Now looking back, I probably should have kept doing PE. Uh, my only issue is is I scored. I used to score really high on PE on practical, but not so much on theory. I didn't really like biology and the body and stuff. Uh, and there was going to be more of a focus on that. So that was the reason why, why I dropped that at that point. And um, college was the time that my, I suppose, life started to change. I'd always been really, really good um, in school. Sorry, I keep looking down. It's my timer to know how long I've been on for. When you're doing podcasts, it's not as much of an issue as it is in, in video, but just to make sure we're on track. So college... Um, went to Culture College, could have gone off to to Win Stanley, which was a college in Wigan that a lot of friends went to, um, and chose to stay at Culture College. It was probably a lazy option because I lived op- opposite the school. Um, interesting time. I always did really well in January, but struggled in the summer. So we used to have like a third of the exams in January and two thirds in in summer. Um, so my grades were always really high in January, and everyone always said to me, "You know, you'll get to college, and now you're going to struggle with your maths." Um, and I got to college and the first lot of results I got from January were were awesome. They were like 92%, 93%. I was dead happy with that. And I was like, ha, I'll show them, you know, college isn't as hard as anyone said, you know, I was breezing through. And then the results I got in that summer, I think I got a U or like 16% in maths exam for like the first time in my life. And I was like, <gasps> like, it's not as easy as, as, as I once thought. So um, by the end of college, I didn't end up with the grades that I really wanted to kind of life, girls, alcohol, um, going out started to, to creep into my life. Uh, and I did have a, have a blast through college. And, and certainly if I'd gone to Win Stanley, I think uh, my life would have been different at this point. And people often ask me, do you know, do you regret that? 
Um, and I go, well, actually, no, because I love what I'm doing now. And if I hadn't made them decisions then, I'm 99% sure I wouldn't be doing what I was doing now. If I'd have gone down the Winstanley route, I'm pretty, uh, you know, I say 99.9% certain I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. And I'm incredibly happy with what I'm doing, you know, got my own house, got my own business. And I don't think that would have, that path would have um, panned out. So I try and say to people, never regret, you don't know, you can't change it. You've made the decisions that you've made at that point and that's got you to where you are now. So just don't regret and keep looking forward um, and, and learn from things, but don't, you know, regret what you've done because you can never, you can never change that. So kind of came to the end of college, didn't get the grades that I wanted to, didn't get into the universities that I wanted to first time round. And rather than going through clearing, I decided to take uh, a year to improve some of my maths because it was modular. So I could just pick out exams and do better uh, in them exams. And um, I actually reapplied for universities and went and got a job. So I worked uh, for the first half of the year for Wigan Council, just doing an admin reception job. Um, but I always kept my part-time jobs. So at one point I was working like 60 hours a week living at home and I had the most money. I probably have more money than, than I even have now um, because I didn't have a time to spend it. I was just working, working, working. Um, but that gave my my first flavour of proper work. Uh, and I remember going into to Wigan, I was covering for maternity leave and this job that was like a 37 and a half hour week job, um, by the end of my time there, even four or five months, I was probably doing all the work in about eight hours. Uh, the girl that I'd replaced on maternity leave was probably fuming because I just made her job more efficient. Everything that she was going around the houses doing, um, I, I I can never deal with that. And I think that still shows today. Do you know everything I try and do? Do you know my accountancy software is linked to this? My this is linked to that? And do you know everything talks to each other so that you're not doing jobs two or three times because that absolutely kills me always. Uh, and it's a good, you know, that was a really good life lesson at that stage. It was also a life lesson to go. This wasn't really, you know. I wanted more, I wanted to push myself more and going down that path was never going to uh, push myself more. So I covered the maternity. Unfortunately, Wigan, um, through all the trying, wouldn't give me a permanent role. You know, everyone in my team wanted um, me to, to keep going for another six months, uh, but there was no no roles available. So I worked in a science research lab. Uh, I actually only did four or five hours a week at this stage uh, because I had all the money in the world. I didn't need, you know, a full-time job and I was enjoying my life and preparing to go off to uni. I think I found poker at this stage as well. Thinking back, actually, I used to love my poker. Um, and I found poker, and looking back now, I was probably awful then. So I was probably playing a lot of poker, but back in them days, it was a lot easier to to play poker and, and do well. Um, so I was probably uh, playing a lot of poker, uh, do my work and uh, and getting by. And then I went off to university. So stage three, I would say, of my, my life was, was university. I'd had this year working, which had taught me so much. I'd come into university... And then university, first year of university was a breeze. I'd been working 60, 70 hour weeks and turn up at uni and probably have to do 25 hours, 30 hours. So first year of uni was was an absolute breeze. Loved it, met loads of people, worked, um, loved the people I lived with, you know, and had all that experience and carried that through to second um, second year. Started working at Sky in second year, which is probably still one of my favourite jobs did 20 hours a week at Sky, they paid really well, it was really relaxed, great company to work for, really customer focused, which I think I've taken that through to to today, Do you know, uh, it's how we like to run Morgan Branding, be really, really honed in on, on the customer and customer service. They also taught something which I thought was dead interesting, we were always looking at how we could improve, but Sky never wanted to be number one for customer service. I think they always quoted companies like Waitrose, John Lewis, uh, which were always really highly ranked. They never wanted to be number one. They wanted to be number four or five. And one of the reasons for that was if your customer service was way over the top, then people relied on it too heavily and never quite fixed things for themselves, which Sky saw as an issue because they wanted their customers to try and sort things before they rang the call centre because if the call centre was always exceptional then there was no reason to uh, even try it yourself you just pick up the phone the phone would be answered straight away and Sky would fix your problem which I think in terms of lessons of customer service it was a really interesting thing for me to, to always think about not necessarily being the best but the best fit for your business um, you'll see as I'm going through I've, I've had a lot of jobs you know uh, I worked as a paper round I worked in a, a takeaway I worked in a restaurant I worked for Wigan Council I worked for a science research company I've worked for Sky uh, and then in third year of uni I worked at Experian now I think even though I'm only 27 
is because I've had a lot of jobs and I've worked in a lot of companies and seen how different companies do things and efficiencies and got frustrated and learnt lessons and had good managers, bad managers, um, that that's why I'm probably more confident to be in the position that I'm in today. I've always loved working. I probably look back and go and earlier said don't regret, but if I hadn't have gone to university, where would I have been now? I think I would have been a lot further on. Uh, but there's a chance I wouldn't. There's a chance that I never really found my way and, you know, just dossed around and was in a, a dead-end job. So that's why I would say don't regret because you, you can never know if, if it had turned out well or not. But I do think that if at 18 I'd have uh, driven down the, you know, entrepreneur, start your own business or, or um, go and learn a business that you wanted to start a business in four or five years later, then I would have been a lot further along the line. Um, so university, I went to... Um, I had a job in Experian. Uh, Experian taught me a lot uh, about the data side of things. Uh, sorry, I'm just checking how long we are in uh, now. So data, uh, which I've taken a lot of that now into Morgan Branding. Um, although we have the design side and, and branding focus, we are really going to hone in on, on data. That is something that I really love. And as we grow, uh, we, we really want to prove that what we do is um, what we do is 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 good. Uh, a lot of our clients love the work that we do, uh, love the speed at which we get it back in. But it'd be great as we move into the bigger companies. We are going to have to then go. Do you know what we did this, which cost you X, which brought you Y back? And I think that is going to be really important and a big next step for for us um, as we look to grow. And, and and maybe I pull on a few of my contacts from my maths days to pull them into to marketing and 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 and, and bring bring them kind of more into my world and out of the banking world or credit. World, which was actually the world I'd planned to go into after university. So after university, stage four, um, coming towards the end of uni, my dad off uh, said to me, um, "Would you come and work for me for six months?" This was at Morgan Williams in Warrington. I never really thought ever about working for my dad. I had worked for my dad. Do you know? I say having many jobs growing up, I used to help him. I used to come into work. Used to help him measure. Used to do filing. Used to do all sorts in the summer holidays. I just wanted to work. Do you know? I actually, looking back, it never really was about the money. I never really spent money. Uh, I just liked working. I was a bit of a weirdo. I, in fact, I didn't add that job in. I had a doctor's surgery job. One summer, I was inputting medical records. And I, I remember walking into this room of like thousands of medical records and thinking, oh my days, by the end of this summer, this needs to be all made into electronic files and I've got to do it all. But I loved it. I just loved working through and I just loved working. So never really bothered me, come work for my dad, never part of the plan, uh, but dad um, asked some help and I said I'd do six months and I was applying for jobs while I was, um, you know, uh, working for dad and just loved it, got offered my dream job at the end of the six months but didn't really want to go to London and I say dream job, I always go dream job because um, that's what I thought I wanted to do for a university, go and work in credit, go work in banking, go work in finance world. Um, but I realised that I really loved people, you know, more than I love the numbers. And if I can use numbers to help the people that I loved working with, that was going to be a bit of a killer, you know, a combination. Um, so loved getting out there. Morgan Williams has, has, has put me on and, and, and introduced me to loads of business owners. It's a commercial estate agents. So you can imagine we're always dealing with people buying, growing, selling, failing, uh, people liquidating, you know, people um, booming, people that are just running a steady business and have done for 40 years and are happy with what they do. Uh, so many different types of businesses. And, and I just loved it. And I just wanted to be them, you know, running their own business. Uh, probably jumped in um, earlier than many would have said I had to with, with Morgan Brandon. Uh, but I felt like I was ready. And um, I also felt like if I started early, if it went wrong, I'd still have time to rectify it. You know, if at 28, 29 now, Morgan Brandon doesn't work and I get in loads of debt and sell my house and go back to point one and go and have to live with mum and dad or live whatever happens... I'm still 29 and I've still got a lot of time. I've still got a degree. I've still got a lot of experience. And some people are in that position at 29, 30 and they, they never even had that experience and they're still living at home and trying to get out. So to me, that that was a timing thing that I had nothing to lose and I still feel like I have nothing to lose, which then puts me in a really powerful position that we can take risks, we can we can go for it because if we've got nothing to lose, then there's only everything to gain and we don't have to be steady. We can just go for it. Um, and there... 
kind of that all my life experience um I can look back to attributing to how it's helped me now I always knew I was a hard worker I always knew I was good at maths I uh, always knew I loved people, do you know, I loved, do you know, working with people, I loved working, do you know, I was a good kid in, in, in high school and, and I understood um, risk and reward, you know, and all that kind of thing, got into gambling early, which I kind of attribute as a, as a good thing, do you know, I played a lot of poker, understood odds, probability, risk, reward, um, winning and losing and, and how to control your emotions in that situation, do you know, in here, if I lose a job, um you've got to get motivated to get straight back on the horse and get that next job. And if you win a job, and in fact, I've been thinking about this a lot recently with, with Morgan Brandon is if we win a job, how do we celebrate that win? Um, do we go for it um, big? Do we, you know, do, I've seen another company, I saw a no brainer have a bell in the office. They ring the bell every time they get a new job. Um, but I know personally, I go quite flat. So, I'm flat if we lose and flat if we win, which probably isn't the best way for a, for a team. I need to be flat and cool, calm if we lose and don't get the job, but I need to be excited and, and happy when we win. Uh, but again, I've heard of other companies celebrate their wins too hard and actually there's bigger underlying problems. So it's quite an interesting debate. We're going we're gonna to think about that a lot more as, as Morgan Branding grows. But I would say all those steps that got me to this point have, have made me who I am now, have made the way that I want to more run Morgan Branding, the way that I want to give young people opportunities, the way that I want to manage young people, the way that we want to have flexibility. That has all come from my experiences um, kind of from, from, from day one. Um, and uh, hopefully, you know, over the next 10, 15, 20 years, we'll see where that, that takes us. So cheers for listening. Thank you.